This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Remember, we're uh, looking at uh, foreign exchange risk management, and we're working through all the technical ways in which you can minimise the risk. Uh, we dealt with forward contracts, which I guess is straightforward enough. Uh, the next um, way we can look at is something called money market hedging, which does need a little more thought, even though well, you shouldn't find it too difficult. I'll go straight to an example. It's only really with an example I can explain the rules and then I'll write them down. So look, if you would, at example six with me. P is due to receive five million in three months' time. Now, OK, we know the spot rate, but of course the spot rate is not relevant to us. I don't want to convert now. We're going to convert in three months. And as always, if we do nothing at all, then we're left at risk. In three months' time, the spot could have moved to anything. Maybe better, maybe worse, but there's risk. There's no mention of any forward rates, so I can't fix it that way. And so the only way that I could um, not be at risk due to movements is if I was to convert now. Because obviously if I convert now, we know what today's spot rate is. There, there's no... not worried about future movements. But how can I convert now when we're not going to get the money for three months? I mean, you know, I can only convert now if I've got dollars now. And I'm not getting the dollars for three months. And so the way we do it is this. Step one, I'll borrow some dollars now. Because as you'll see, if I can borrow dollars now, if I've got some dollars now, then of course we can convert at today's rate, which is fixed. However, two things, if I borrow dollars, we're going to have to pay interest on them. And what's the interest rate? Uh, well, it says, ignore the three months of the minute, it says um, US prime, so it's dollars I'm borrowing, so it's the US interest rate that I'm interested in, is 5.2 to 5.8 percent. I wonder why they give two rates. Well, they give two rates because one rate will apply if you're depositing money, and the other rate will apply if you're borrowing. So I don't think you really need a rule. I think fairly obviously, if we're borrowing now, we'll pay the higher rate, which is 5.8%. Now, the second thing is, when it says three-month interest rates, the interest they quote will depend on how long you're borrowing for. You know, if you're borrowing for three months, it'll be one rate. If you're borrowing for six months, then... Uh, they'll charge a different rate. Well, interest rates quoted are always yearly rates. They always got them as yearly rates. But if you're borrowing for three months, they'll charge you at the rate of 5.8% a year. If you are borrowing for six months, ooh, they might charge at the rate of 6% per year. They always quote it as a yearly rate. But since we're only going to borrow for three months, because in uh, three months' time, I'll receive my money and I can repay the borrowing. So we'll borrow money for three months, and therefore the actual interest uh, will be 12 months in a year. It'll be three twelfths of the yearly rate. And so, uh, the actual interest will end up having to pay.
is 1.45%. The final thing, though, is how much am I going to borrow? Uh, the point being, uh, you see, I will be able to borrow money on the strength that in uh, three months' time, I'll have five million, and I'll use the five million to repay the, this money I've borrowed. But I don't want to borrow five million, because if I, have to borrow, if I borrow five million, when you add on the interest in three months' time, I'll end up owing more than five million. And we're only receiving five million. So I want to make sure that the amount I borrow, let's say it's X. I want to make sure that in three months time, when we've added on the interest, the total owing will be five million and the receipt will repay it. Well, you see, if you were to borrow X now, and there's interest at 1.45%, in three months time, add on the interest, and you'd owe that much. And I want to make sure the total I end up owing is the five million I'll receive. Because as I'll write down later, in three months when I get the five million, I'll use it to repay the borrowing. So how much can I afford to borrow now? Surely X will be equal to that divided by 1.0145 million. So, the amount I'll borrow now oh, I do apologise. The amount I'll borrow now is 5 million divided by 1.0145 and so how much will I borrow Four nine two eight five three six dollars. Just check that again to make sure. Four nine two eight five three six. Yeah, I did say before. He expects you to do the working to the nearest dollar, nearest pound, whatever it is. So there's step one. I'll borrow four point nine million dollars now. Why do I do that? Because now that I've got these dollars, I can convert to pounds at today's exchange rate. So step two, convert to pounds at the spot rate. Which is fixed, of course, today's spot. And so which way around? Well, We've got four nine two eight five three six dollars. That's how many dollars we've got. We're now going to sell those dollars to the bank to convert them to pounds. And so the dollar sell rate one point five four two six. It converts to four nine two. 8536 divided by 1.5426, it converts to 3194954 now. So I borrow money at fixed interest. I've converted uh, the money today at today's spot. And so we've now got. Uh, 3 million, 3.2 million pounds today. Now, in fact, you could stop there and just keep the money, but uh, remember, had we done nothing at all, really we were getting money in three months' time, and you know, you would normally be converting in three months' time. And so, to make it comparable, we won't take those pounds now, we'll leave it. We'll put it on deposit for three months. Deposit pounds for three months. Uh, what will the interest rate be? Well, it's pounds, so we'll be, use UK LIBOR, the official rate. Again, two rates. 
If you're depositing money, they'll pay us the lower rate, which is 3.6%. Uh, but again, they're always quoted as an annual rate, even though this is only for three-month deposits. Uh, and so the actual interest will be three-twelfths of that. Three-twelfths is 0.9%. So, I'm going to put that three million on deposit for three months. How much will it grow to? Uh, three million, one, nine, four, nine, five, four. To add on interest at, be careful, it's 0.9 of a percent. It's a bit less than one percent. Uh, multiply by one plus R, oh, oh, nine. And it will have grown to three, one, nine, four, nine, five, four times Sorry, 3194954 times 1.009. It'll have grown to 3223709 in three months. All right, now, obviously, you can learn the steps and learn the arithmetic, but do be clear what's happening here. As of now, There is actually no net cash flow to us. As of now, we borrow money, we immediately convert it, we put it on deposit. So as of now, you know, borrow, convert, deposit, uh, there's no net cash in or out, if you take my point. The only big effect is in three months' time. And in three months' time, two things happen. First of all, we get the money from the customer. We receive $5 million. But, in a sense, we don't take the money. That goes immediately to repay the borrowing. But the second thing that happens in three months' time is, of course, our pound deposit matures. And what happens? We receive a fixed uh, whatever the amount was, 3223709. And so the net effect, surely, in three months' time, five million comes in, we get 3223709. Again, it's a fixed amount in three months. And it's irrelevant what happens to the exchange rate in the future. We've borrowed, deposited at fixed interest. And so although there's all this messing around, the end result is we get a fixed receipt of 3223709 in three months' time. Effectively, just the same as if we'd used forward rates. So, I mean, it takes me a while to go through step by step, obviously. But it's one of those things, I don't know, you can learn rules, but the more you see what we're doing, the clearer, the easier, rather, it is to remember. I say it's effectively the same as um, forward rates, and in fact it is. I'm not wasting your time here, but years ago, forward rates didn't exist. Money markets did. So you could do this money market hedging, uh, but... It's really only really feasible on large amounts. If you're talking about millions, fine, I'm prepared to go through that hassle. If I'm just talking about a thousand or two thousand, this is really feasible. And so what happened is the banks and people 
to make it easier for people to do this on smaller amounts. Uh, they started offering forward rates. We've dealt with that, you saw how easy it is. But what's actually happening? Forward rates are not the bank guessing, oh, I think the interest rate will be, the, sorry, the exchange rate will be this or this. You've got lots of people with small amounts wanting forward rates. The bank puts all the money together and the bank uses money market hedging. So they're using your money, they're doing, they're doing this exercise on all the money pooled together, and the end result, they just quote you a forward rate. But the way they get the quote is effectively money market hedging. The two are exactly the same. Uh, so as to which you prefer in real life, uh, if it's large amounts, you'll do money market hedging. For small amounts, no, it's not really feasible. You'll use forward rates. But forward rates, although we always ignore them, there will be bank charges. So it's it to be rather more expensive if we use forward rates uh, on very large amounts. Okay, that's money market hedging. However, uh, for completeness, although it's exactly the same principle, some people do get a bit confused. Um, well, I'll stop this lecture, but in the next lecture, I'll do another money market hedging, where instead of receiving money, as we were here, we're going to pay money. So it's all basically the same logic, but, well, I, th I think it's rather important to show you how we deal with it if we need to pay money. But that's the next lecture.